welcome to Home of Heroes, a show where we feature sporting legends that actually need no introduction. Yet here I am with three gentlemen who wrote their names in the history books with a team that went unbeaten through an entire Premier League season. They were brought together as a band of brothers by legendary Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger and then went into footballing folklore as a bunch of unbeaten warriors. Let me welcome Robert Perez, Sol Campbell and Gilberto Silva, our Arsenal Invincibles. Home of Heroes, gentlemen, <laughs> uh, before I get to any questions, let me uh, make you turn around and have a look at that picture, which will possibly remain in all of our memories, let alone yours, as the culmination of a sporting achievement yet unmatched and unprecedented in British footballing history. But so, as you jog down memory lane, looking at uh, those smiling faces just behind you, mm. two decades on, <laughs> whew, what does it mean to be an invincible still, till, the, till this date, and what it mean to you back then? Well, I think um, back then we didn't really know, you know, what we really achieved because um, until people start talking to us and realizing how long and the length of time this kind of record kind of uh, had stood, um, and then after you, it really sinks in, and then two decades on, you see people nearly there uh, or assemble an amazing team and don't make it. Um, then you realise how special the, uh, the accolade and the special um, feeling and players and, and everything, the whole mixture of, of, of what we were producing and the manager and the club, everything around the club and how we, how we kind of achieved this um, amazing kind of feat. Two years before this, Robert, and I'd like, your, like to take your attention to a very famous picture, you'd already achieved the double with Arsenal, right? You'd won the Premier League, you'd won the FA Cup as well, and there were teammates of yours who were buying, bowing down to you as you were holding the trophy a lot. I remember, I, I wonder if you remember this picture just uh, next to you, back there. Yeah. Uh, but why was it different to be an invincible with Arsenal two years later? Uh, oh, this is a good question, but I remember all the, this picture. For me, uh, I think it's one of the best uh, moments during my career, because of course we, we won the title, but at this moment, I was injured for six months. You know, 2004, it was amazing, outstanding season uh, for everything. Of course, uh, thanks Arsene Wenger, the boss. And he find, the, I think, the good mix, you know, between, of course, English players, but foreigners players, like French players, Brazilian play players, <laughs> uh, Dutch players, Spanish players, Germans. Yeah. Germans like uh, Jens Lehmann. So that's why I'm very, for me, I'm very happy, mm. proud uh, to be part on this, uh, on this team. Great memories, right? But you spoke of the Brazilian, so let's get to the Brazilian <laughs> then in Gilberto Silva. Now, Gilberto, now you'd already won a World Cup with, uh, with Brazil, right? You'd played with some great players. You, played, you were a part of a great Brazilian team. But why was it different to be an invincible with Arsenal even after having picked up the one trophy that every footballer wants to win? All right, so for me, arriving at, at the club after the World Cup was something uh, very significant and very important in my career. It's a continuation of what we had done, you know, uh, quite recently with Brazil. But uh, in the meantime, for me, it's like um, going to Arsenal when I went. I was just, just start a new chapter of my career. But you have to start from scratch, build up things, because I went to England, I could not speak English. I could, I did not understand exactly what the culture like, what the football, and I knew it was a physical football. It was very physical. I remember the first few days, I could not walk after two, three days, you know, properly, <laughs> because I was full of pain in my body. But you have to adapt. Yes. I think the importance of uh, when you have a good team is when everybody adapts to the circumstance they face. We, we demand from each other. <laughs> we want, I want him to perform well because I knew his capacity. So the same. Also, I, I don't know if you guys remember, the season before was tough to us because yes. we lost. Lost, yeah. yeah. And uh, good, this yeah. was very painful yeah. because we had a gap in front of uh, Manchester United. I think it was eight to 10 points. Yes. After we drew against Blackburn, we never played the same football. Everything collapsed. I don't know how and why. 
That's a good point that Gilberto makes because mm. obviously after that season, which was a difficult one, like you said, Gilberto, yeah. uh, Arsene Wenger had already mentioned in, in one of the news pieces that he'd like to see this team going unbeaten throughout the season. But when was that word invincible perhaps first mentioned in the dressing room or in, or in training? For me, I, I only heard last 10 games. When we won the title, it was at, uh, against Tottenham. Yeah. I remember the day after, I said, OK, we are champions, but we can do uh, to win the uh, trophy mm. Invincibles. So it was, I remember, it was the new challenge. Yeah, yeah. And of course, when you have players like, uh, uh, like Thierry Henry, mm. it's easy to go on this, on this target. Now, before the Wenger era, I mean, Premier League sides were generally dominated by English or British players. And then suddenly, this Arsenal side was like a mini globe, right? There were Brazilians, like you mentioned, there were Frenchmen, there was, there was a German in goal as well, there were Ivorians in this side. How difficult was it for you personally to adjust to the different cultures? Not that difficult. The first, because you play around good players. <laughs> Secondly, you play with good people. Mm. Good yes. people help you. The big players, they help you a lot. But it was important for me to learn the language. Learn yeah. the language makes things fast and uh, easier for me to understand them, to communicate with them, make, make everything you know, a lot easier. I have some fun as well. I have a question for Sol. Yeah, go for it. Arsene, may I call you? Yeah. What now? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> when, when you used to play for Tottenham? No. No? No. Gary. Who? Who? Physio. You used, no used to talk to me. <laughs> no way. Is that how you moved to Arsenal? No, no. Because the physio no, called no. you. No. He's very surprised. <laughs> oh, so what's that? Like, oh, what's no happening? Way. No, because remember, it's like, uh, at, that no, because time, at that time, it was only Tony. He didn't really speak. Or Martin. There was yeah. never speaking about me going over there because I was going to take their position. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> no, because for you, I think it was very difficult to take this decision. Yeah, to, for you me. play for Tottenham yeah, for and me. you go for the, yeah, but the, the, thing is, best, for the best rivality. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, yeah, when you, yeah, but when you look at the team, it's, it's, there was, when no? you look at the team at the time, there was no comparison. No problem for this guy, right? Because the gaffer speaks French or spoke French and uh, Thierry Henry was in this side. There's a very famous picture of you and Thierry Henry as well. The captain, Patrick Vieira, spoke French. Was it easier for you to just adjust to the ethos and philosophy of the team because guys like Thierry were in the side? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember this picture, by the way? Yes, always. Uh. What's he uh, saying to you? <laughs> he he loves to, to talk. He loves to talk. Pass the ball. Uh, <laughs> you know, Thierry. <laughs> Get the ball past me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to score. Yeah, I want to score. You need, when you have the ball, you need to play with me. Okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> is, he, is he looking but, at your boots, Robert, there? Or does he, does no, he no, no, he, no, no, no. He, he, he explains something on the, on the field, the position, uh, the movement of, uh, of him. Uh, he's, he's Thierry. Thierry is... Uh, yeah. No, uh, perfectionist. Yeah, yeah. Theory. Yeah, theory. I love the, all the theory. But uh, <laughs> uh, th theory is uh, one of the best striker for me. Mm. On this moment, he was uh, maybe number, number two, just behind uh, Ronaldo, the Brazilian. Yeah. But he was an amazing player. What about the skipper, though, Gilberto? Patrick Vieira. Now, I, I remember when Brazil won the World Cup in Yokohama in 2002, uh, Arsene Wenger obviously wanted you to slot in alongside Patrick Vieira in the middle of the park after Emmanuel Petit uh, just grown older, perhaps, uh, for, for Arsenal by then. What was his message to you? And uh, what was it like playing with uh, Patrick in the middle of the park with the captain himself? It was great to play alongside Patrick. I think for both of us, we help each other. It was quite easy to understand, you know. Uh, as we mentioned, when you play with uh, good players, things are easy you know, on the field because... We facilitate things, they facilitate things for, for, your, for you. He helped me a lot, you know, and to understand that he was a fighter. And I, we knew we could rely on him, you know, as a captain on the field. When Patrick was on the field, there was something different. Let's have a look at that, Gilberto, right? There's so much silk and steel in there. Uh, see, Vieira's in there. You can see a certain Ashley Cole who then moved to a different London club. Uh, Robert's obviously there, very different hairstyle to what he has now. Thierry Henry <laughs> resembling Sol Campbell more now. Uh, with uh, the paucity <laughs> of hair, perhaps. Good memories of this? Uh, very good memories. You know, you see... The it was in uh, Tottenham. Uh, yeah. This one? Yeah. Oh, when, yeah. We, when we won the title. Oh, wow. This is that picture when he was still making his mind up whether to pick the physio spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah? <laughs> but, uh, you know, this, uh, it was amazing. You know, these this guys, you know, they, they are amazing. 
uh, totally different of the, the quality, but at the end, uh, it's, la on, it's on only one word, to win, to win together. Yeah. And of course, they have only four players, but I think um, I'm agree with Gigi, it was the team. And of course, all brought together by uh, the yeah. manager himself, Arsene Wenger. Where would, you, where would you rate Arsene Wenger amongst the greatest managers that you've ever worked under, worked with, or worked against? Ah, for me, Arsene uh, is uh, one of the best managers. Um, I know him since a long, long time because he's French. Uh, I'm French. Um, I used to play for Marseille. He was uh, in the Monaco. And uh, I remember because he called me uh, six months uh, before I, uh, I joined uh, Arsenal. And for me, yeah, it was a, it was a great call from Arsene, from Arsenal. And um, I said, uh, he said, yeah, I want you because maybe I will lose the mark over Mars. So I need you, I want you. I say, wow, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and, and six months after, yeah, I, I joined, uh, I joined uh, yeah, Arsenal. It was in 2000. Thanks for staying with us on this episode of Home of Heroes. It's a very special one because we're in conversation with not one, not two, but three <laughs> Arsenal invincibles. Robert Perez, Sol Campbell, Gilberto Silva, welcome back. Now, before the break, we spoke about how this uh, band of brothers came together, brought together by the legendary manager, Arsene Wenger. We now move to the battles within the war. And if Sol, I could put you on the spot. Which is the one battle in this invincible run that really stood out for you? Um, I would oh. say against Liverpool. Anfield? Yeah. Okay. Amazing. It didn't, it didn't, quite, it didn't quite start well against Everton uh, because... A certain Sol Campbell oh, was, uh, was, Everton. was shown, was shown oh, a red card in the 25th I, minute. I forgot, I forgot in that one. I can't remember that one. You have to show me. Okay. Later. Well, we've got a picture. We've got a picture to reference that. Uh, there's a certain... Yeah, that is, I, did nothing. I did nothing. I did nothing. I did nothing. What's he doing there? Is that him on the floor? Yes. Look. Oh, that's it. I think it was... Um, it was an accident. I think the referee, if, it, if we had VAR, they would have come back and said, OK, no, no, yellow. Yeah, it's yeah. an accident to yeah. track. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow for you as well, Robert, in, on that challenge? I can't you remember? remember. I can't remember. <laughs> He's saying no. <laughs> That's not definitely. No, but Gravison, no huh? Yeah, no it's idea. tough, huh? It's tough. It is. It's tough. Yeah. He's a tough not, uh, uh, oh, oh, it's not yeah. uh, weak. Uh? Yeah. <laughs> OK, moving on. Uh, the Battle of Old Trafford comes to mind, right? Uh, Gilberto, now, uh, you were the one playing that game. In fact, uh, these two guys didn't feature in that game, at least in the 11. Uh, what do you remember from that game? Because there were some really heated exchanges, as we'll see in some of the pictures that'll come right behind nice. you. Oh, you have nice. memories of that game? Yeah, yeah. Very clear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk us through it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like... The um, rivalry. Look at the diver. No, the, game, the rivalry was, like, was quite tough, you know. It was quite fun in Ronaldo because he pushed somebody and run. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Push. But um, everyone knew about the rivalry between the two clubs. And uh, we knew that it was going to be hard then. And um, somehow Patrick got sent off. I think the game was nil-nil. And um, it was very strange the way he got sent off because he did not, you know, uh, hit uh, Nilsoroy. But somehow the referee gave him the, the red card, was big tension. Afterwards, they gave a penalty for them. Uh, you know, it was quite disappointed for us. And uh, we, uh, oh, what now? We're going to lose. You know, we won a very good run. And um, they missed it. And uh, somehow the ball, we kicked. It away and then start some arguments. Martin <laughs> Keon came and fly over when he arrived. The famous arms job. open. Yeah. So, and do you now, in retrospect, uh, miss out on that on that party that we just saw in the pictures? No, no. I, it's all about we're all the team. Some of us going to be for the majority of games, and others only say three or four or five games. You know, uh, it's all about a team. And uh, this is what I'm trying to kind of say. These type of accolades. I think for me, spiritually, it's like it picks you. You don't pick it. And one of those moments was uh, how Anfield chose this man, right? Robert Perez scoring that winner. And there was, some, yeah. there was, a, there was a hefty <laughs> celebration as well. It, it obviously meant quite a lot to you, Robert, as you can see in that picture oh, yes. scoring that winner. Do you remember that goal in particular? you remember the feeling after the, after the win? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> I remember of the, about the feeling. Uh, not, not because I, I scored, but because we, we won 2-1 in uh, Anfield. Mm. 
And I think uh, this day was a great, great performance for, for Arsenal. I think he's one of the best goals I scored with, uh, <laughs> with this club. I, I want to talk always about the team, about the players, uh, about the spirit, about the commitment. Uh, and we, for example, just before we talk about against uh, Man United, we fight together. When one player is in trouble, we go to help the player. Which was a more difficult place to visit, Anfield or Old Trafford back in, back in that season? I think both, but uh, I think the rivalry between Arsenal and Manchester United was, for me, I consider it bigger at that time because they fight each other for title yeah. many of the time, you know, many times. And uh, by every time when they go to Highbury, it was, was tough to them because we need to give back something, you know, when we went there. More stuff to us, same for them. I, I used to find that out of Manchester United, Liverpool back then, I used to find going to Anfield, playing it there, harder than Manchester United. Um, because of the atmosphere? Or? I don't know, it's just one of those <clears throat> stadiums that you had to, like if you weren't on it, you really got ripped apart, you know, if you weren't on it I at, thought, that time, at I, that time. I thought you might pick White Hart Lane, right? Because there were plenty of, plenty of draws. Uh, where you had to grind it out as well, like the one at Old Trafford, and then one at White Hart Lane, right, in that famous 2-2 score, and there was a famous banner that was put out. Why did Seoul leave the lane? Arsenal champions 43 years, and you're still waiting. Why did you leave the lane, Seoul? <laughs> I think it just, it's self-explanatory up there. Um, <laughs> you know, you want to win, you know. The main thing is this, you know, I, I kind of, I was with a team in Tottenham, and um, don't get me wrong, I had so many managers and so many players coming in and out and maybe two or three, four players, decent, <laughs> but not, not 10 or 15 or, you know, 18 good players, top, top, top players. That was the difference at that time. An invincible season, right, Gilberto? Uh, Guardiola's Barcelona couldn't do it, Bayern Munich couldn't do it, Man City haven't done it yet. Mourinho's Chelsea couldn't do it either. Hansi Flick's Bayern Munich picked up six trophies in a year, but they couldn't go through an entire season invincible. Will it ever be repeated, according to you? Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be repeated. I think a record does exist to be broken. Yes. But uh, it's not that simple. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, all these great managers, they, they had a great, great teams in their hands, and they were close, but not yet. Won it. The point is, every <laughs> time when they are close, they lose, we celebrate. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's a fair point. <laughs> so, any team that will come the closest? I don't know. There's a lot of people, a lot of teams are spending money. Um, yeah. Manchester City came close. Liverpool yes. came close. Um, Chelsea came close. Um, I, it, and I, it, and I think, knows? And I think all of, all of the, this team, they want... Oh, yeah, for sure. They point. want sure. to break the record. They want that yes. little golden, yeah. uh, which I think all of us should have one. <laughs> so you ready for a little bit of quiz? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, wow. Go On ahead. the spot, uh, <laughs> Gilberto first. Who was the most skilled invincible, according to you? The most skilled? Mm. Yeah, feel free to mention yourself in any of these questions, by the way. Skill. Skill, skill, skill. Oh, Thierry. Yeah. Thierry? Yeah. Thierry? Uh, yes, I think Thierry Henry, yes. Mm. Thierry, for you? Yeah. Unanimous. Easy. Which Invincible was Arsene Wenger's favourite? Ah. Uh, favourite? Yeah. That's got them thinking. That's good. Uh, I don't know. Favourite? Thierry? <laughs> Thierry? No? Gilberto? Thierry or Patrick? Or Thierry Patrick? again? Or Patrick? Or Patrick, maybe. Patrick? Patrick or Dennis? No? Captain? Yeah, one Patrick. of those two. Dennis. Wait, 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 wait. No, wait, Patrick. Wait. Patrick. Patrick. I mean, Patrick. A, bit, a few murmurs over here. I'm trying to make sense of this. Okay, so Patrick Vieira is what we're going with, yeah? yeah? All right, a couple it's of Patrick. Frenchmen getting a mention. It's Patrick. Patrick? Patrick. Okay, definitely. <laughs> Who was the worst dressed? Worst dressed? Uh, yeah, I Martin. know. Martin Keown? Martin Keown. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Martin. <laughs> Martin. Martin. Which Invincible was most likely to start a fight? Oh. Start a fight? Laurent. Laurent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gilberto? Yeah, Laurent. Lauren. Most likely to start a fight, Lauren? Uh, Lauren. Uh, Lauren, I could say that. Ah, Lauren, yeah, was good. Yeah, good Lauren. Say, yeah he was Lauren. ready for the boxing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. The boxing. <laughs> he, he loved the, he loved, uh, the he box. Loved the box. Yeah. He loved the box. Yeah. Yeah. So I know he plays the mandolin. Which Invincible uh, had the best taste in music? 
The best. Uh, I think the, 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 the dressing room, Thierry used, Thierry, used to bring. Oh, ah, yeah, Thierry. Used to bring. Yeah. Henri, best tasting. Yeah. You didn't yeah. like Caribbean. playing his mandolin in the other room? Yeah, <laughs> mandolin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, who knew the best restaurants in London? I'm assuming Seoul or somebody else? Sorry? Momos? Ah, Momos. Ah, yeah. yes, nice. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Okay, yes. so I, I'm, I'm assuming there's no one answer to this no. one, right? We all knew, we all knew, I think we all knew restaurants. Something different, and, yeah. different types of. Okay, which Invincible would you pick to fight Roy Keane in a boxing match? <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> yes, Patrick. Of course. Patrick. 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 No which problem. Invincible hated Man United the most? Uh, eight. Man United. Martin? Martin oh, yes. again? Yeah, Martin Gion. Yeah. The, the best dancer in the dressing room. Best, best dancer. dancer. Be before it was Silva Wiltog, but... Silva, ah. no. Not, not Wiltog? Really. Oh, on two, in 2004? Yeah. Toure? No? No, no. Uh, Pires? No, on me, no. No, Oof, no, no, very Come on, bad. Sol? Very Give bad. us something. Sol Campbell. Sol Campbell, okay. Humble as ever. What about you, Gilberto? <laughs> <laughs> Samba. Uh, let, let's see. I would like to see. Let, let's, uh, let's show some flavor. <laughs> Let's see, let's can see. you have a dance off? Go for it. No, <laughs> can, you, uh, can you put the music, please? <laughs> put the salsa. Did put the salsa. Me, did me last Saturday? What, was Ooh, salsa? Yeah. What, what, what kind of song? Oh, you saw me last Saturday. <laughs> last one. Who was the naughtiest player in the team? The naughtiest. Naughtiest? Ray, Ray or Ray. Will Todd? I think you're Ray. No, Ray. 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 Yeah, Ray, Parlo. Ray Parlo. Ray Parlo. Ray Parlo. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I just thought I'll ask you guys this to finish things off on Home of Heroes. How do you want to be remembered uh, with Arsenal fans, or perhaps fans the world over, Robert? I think... Uh, of course, for the achievement that you had. Yeah, the achievement it was very, uh, very good. Um, I think uh, all the Arsenal fans, they are very proud about this, uh, this team. We fight, I said we fight during 10 months. And 10 months, believe me, is long. It's a long way. So I think for the fans, it was, yeah, it was an amazing season. And um, for me, it was always special. I don't know for, for you, but very special to play at uh, Highbury Stadium. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah. fantastic. Close. It was close. Wow. So that's why I think, you know, communication between fans and players, it was, for me, yeah, it was yeah, outstanding. Yeah. So a lot of teenagers watching this who may not know too much about Highbury and perhaps the achievement of the Invincibles. What would you say to the current crop that are now supporting Mikel Arteta's side and hoping they achieve this? Well, I think for me, it's all about, you know, they're choosing their own pathway, uh, doing it in a different way, but obviously doing it in a, you know, they're fighting as well. They're, they're really trying, to, they're playing really good football. Um, it's all about consistency now and maintaining that, if they stick together and they kind of be true to themselves and play to their maximum and be a family and be close-knitted and, uh, and uh, humble about it as well, yeah. never lose your way. Just keep playing and keep winning. Don't get too high, don't get too low, be consistent, then they'll do it. But if something else happens, then it's going to be difficult for them to get over the line and win. Gilberto, over to you. With all the <laughs> Arsenal fans in India watching this and watching you and celebrating this achievement as we speak. It's just, it was great, you know, it's great moments in life. This is once in a lifetime you have this opportunity to be there. Now, I also said, we don't choose it, we were chosen. And the good thing is that look back and uh, see that we left a good place for others. We leave the club in a better place, a better position. We did the best to build uh, Arsenal strong, to put them in a place where everybody knows about the club, when they say Arsenal, they somehow remember a little bit of us. I couldn't have summed it up better. Gilberto, thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a real privilege having you guys with thank us on very much. this episode of uh, Home of Heroes. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, just tell us uh, why. But until the next episode of Home of Heroes, from all the Arsenal Invincibles and myself, it's goodbye. <laughs>